We are live. Bienvenidos and welcome back, familia, to another uh, watch party for the chosen. We're now watching episode two of season three. If you can hear me, give me a thumbs up and let me know that you can hear me okay. Um, I've always had some sort of technical issue with the with sound, and so I just want to make sure that you all can hear me just fine. Uh, fine. Hello, uh, Jackie. Glad that glad that you're here, Christopher Rod Rodriguez. What's up? Well, um, greetings to Lubbock, Texas. Every time I hear that, I remember uh, La Bamba <laughs> when he goes, Lubbock, Texas. Uh, <laughs> Ms. Norris, welcome. Lady Marie, welcome. We got uh, Erica is on, in the other room helping out with the chat. Uh, shout out to her. Thank you, love, for all your all your help there. Uh, we got Lynn Clemens in the house. Welcome. Who else do we have? J. John Law. Welcome. Stephanie Parella or Parella. Welcome. Uh, the reactions. Thank you so much for being here, Nora. Thank you, Nora, for being here. Uh, so excited to get started with this. Good. I'm glad you can hear me. Melinda, thank you so much for joining us. Horseface guy. Hey, welcome. <laughs> every time I see your, your, uh, every time I see your screen name, um, I, it puts a smile on my face. It's funny. Um, I just wanted to quick, quickly give a shout out to Jaylena, who is, I guess a part of this, uh, a part of the channel for quite some time now. Big Sharon, what's up? We have uh, she sent a, she sent Erica and I this painting. Well, I, I can't show you the other painting, but there's another beautiful painting right up here of like a daytime setting and then like a nighttime sky setting. And for our birthdays this year, she sent us this. She sent Erica this painting. Look at that, Isn't that beautiful. And she sent me this one. Look at that. Oh, it's so beautiful. Love it. So Jelena, thank you so much for. For thinking of us, thank you for thank you for the birthday presents. Uh, thank you all for for the birthday shout outs and for the birthday well wishes. Appreciate you all so much. Just want to let you all know we're gonna get started soon. But first, I have to give thanks to our sponsors. First of all, uh, first and foremost, we uh, today's video is brought to you uh, by the sorry I'm clicking here Angel Studios app. Um, for those of you who haven't downloaded it yet, you can download. But just check this out. And then I'll be right with you. Hello there, I'm Leonardo Torres. I am formerly known as the non-Christian reacting to Christian content. And I've got some great news. The Chosen Season 3 has finally arrived. Erica and I went to see Episodes 1 and 2 in theaters. And I can't tell you what a great experience that was for us. It was exciting for us to be a part of something that was happening worldwide. And in my opinion, going to be one of the best things to ever happen to Christian storytelling. My favorite thing about Episodes 1 and 2 is the storytelling. I feel like Seasons 1 and 2 beautifully set us up for the story that's about to unfold in season three. The music is beautiful. The cinematography is beautiful. The acting is stellar. Erica and I both cried and we laughed and we cried and laughed at the same time. <laughs> whether you've never seen a single episode or are considering checking it out or whether you're like me who patiently waited for season three, be sure to check out the new episodes on the Angel Studios app. With the Angel Studios app, you'll be able to enjoy all seasons of The Chosen, including the new episodes, on your phone and on every major streaming device. One thing that I love about it is that you can watch it for free and if you love it, you can support Support future seasons and you can make it free for the next family to watch by paying it forward. In addition to The Chosen, Angel Studios has so many other shows that you and your family can enjoy, including Testament, which is a movie that is going to be turned into a series, which I haven't seen myself, but I've heard a lot of great things about. The brand new series, The Wing Feather Saga, which I've heard is like the Chronicles of Narnia mixed with The Princess Bride. They also have Dry Bar Comedy, the largest library of family-friendly comedy on the internet, The Tuttle Twins Show, and so much more. Another great feature of the Angel Studios app is that you get to decide what gets created next, making you the gatekeeper of great future content that amplifies light. Click the link to get the Angel Studios app and don't miss the new episodes of The Chosen. Excellent, Familia. We are excited to get started. Thank you so much to Angel Studios for sponsoring the channel. Let's get started. If you're ready to go, let, let's, uh, let's see those dancing emojis. Let's get them ready, shall we? Uh, <laughs> you love that hat? Oh, that my, my fedora in the, in the show? Yeah. Uh, here, let me just fix myself. A little quick shout out to the Raiders for winning that big game last uh, Sunday. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's see. Oh, yeah, we haven't had the baby yet. Um, the baby's still uh, baking. <laughs> All right, let's get this one started like this. Is that better or is this one better? Uh, probably this one. This is the one I use, isn't it? Yeah, that's the one I use. Okay. Excellent. Ah, we're getting some dancing emojis here. 
We're getting some fish emojis. Jackie's over there dancing. I know it's really late for you, Jackie. Thank you for being here with us. A horse, horse face guy. That just reminds me of Nacho. Everything reminds me of Nacho Libre when uh, when they want to go pro and he goes, so you want to be a so you want to be a pro wrestler? What does he say? So you want to be a professional horse face or something like that? He calls him horse face. <laughs> uh, let's see. Excellent. Okay, cool. Let's let's get this road on the show. Ah, what? What's going on? Don't do this to me. Here we go. Oh no, that was me. That was... Oh, I can't hear it. Let's see. Give me one second. It's not going to my speakers. Why? Why? There it is. It's, it's going to my speaker, not my headphones. And I need to hear it. Better. There it is. Beautiful scene. Creamy. They're here for Jesus of Nazareth. It is understandable. You don't think this poses a problem to the order of law? Uh, Yes, sir. I only meant that... Quintus is going to come out of his sandals when he sees this. Something in your personal life? No, sir. <laughs> he sees him deep in thought and he's like... I am fit for duty, sir. That's fine. That's fine. You know, secrets... like murders eventually become known... Eventually. What's he referring to? You ought to be the first to let Quintus know about his new shanty town. Yeah? Come. Is he like, like the equivalent of like the FBI here? Is that what he is? By the way, um, I am going to pause this, okay, for several reasons. If you joined us yesterday, you'll know that I have to pause it for copyright issue reasons and uh, I'll talk to you about it. <laughs> He's more like CIA and NSA? Okay. He's a ghost. Ooh. Yeah, guy seems affected by the sermon. It's concerned, don't you think? Very concerned. Stop. What are you doing? They can't have a fire so close to a canvas structure. It's it's Capernaum law. Since when do you care about the law? If they keep it, it draws Roman attention and it will put him at risk. Yeah. What are you going to do? Tell them the fires. Have it your way. Excuse me. There's no room here. No fires fewer than nine cubits from a canvas structure, it's a hazard. But that would put it within nine cubits of that tent. Then you're gonna to have to figure something out. We can't have trouble. Who's we? Are you one of his disciples? Where is he in Capernaum? He said, who's we? Who's, who said he's in Capernaum? That's why we're all here. When will his next sermon be? We have to hit it. He's the one, isn't he? He didn't say that on the mouth. But it has to be true. Why did he not speak of overthrow in Rome? I was fire patrol working for you. <laughs> These crowds are going to be difficult to handle. Hard for us. Yes, Jesus can handle himself. He wants the crowds. There's too many people. 
too many to go around telling people how to make dinner. You have to pick your battles, my friend. Oh, all right, Familia, you know what the deal is. Wherever you are, wherever you find yourself, we're dancing now. Come on, let's get those bones moving. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't even have to be on beat. Just move. <laughs> get some clap, clapping going on. Baby Ezekiel in the house. <laughs> and Erica. <laughs> what are you doing? Shout out to John Quinn, Adam Lithinj. Shout out to James R. Cunningham. Shout out to Constant Kanapoulos. Mark, you're awesome. Chris, you're awesome. Chad, you're awesome. <laughs> you go by too fast, too fast. Matthew, I see you dancing there. Let's do this. We last left off with him calling him son again. Oh, this. This is good. Thank you. Not really. <laughs> Our current batch isn't very good. I've been traveling and I haven't had good wine, so this is fine. How were your travels? We'd love to hear more about them. They were good. Thank you. Are you sure? You've lost weight. Have you been eating enough? Um, I used to eat too much. No, you didn't. You looked healthy when I saw you. I hope... Ellie. <laughs> said it was good. I like your beard. Mm, thank you. <laughs> He's like, say something. How did you handle sleeping outside? I'm better at it now. I'm proficient at making a tent, and I've also learned how to strip bark for dry wood. Philip is my friend. You have a friend? Yesterday, my rabbi said that every time we pray to God, we must ask him to forgive us our debts. And I recognize that I oh. owe quite a debt to you. Matthew. You don't owe us any money. The debt isn't material. Oh. I hurt you. And I hurt our community. And, and my rabbi also said that before we lay a sacrifice at the altar, <sighs> if we know a brother has an offense against us, we should leave the sacrifice there. I, mean, I know it's building, but I really have to point out just one small thing here. And then I promise I'll let this play to the end unless I see something else. But look how I love the way that this is filmed because they're showing his anxiety, right? He gets up and he's fidgeting with his hands, right? I love that. And I love that they're showing all this. I recognize that I and he says, owe quite a debt to you. The debt is not money or monetary. Matthew, you don't owe us any money. The debt isn't material. Material. Yeah. I hurt you. And I hurt our community. And, and my rabbi yeah. also said that before we lay a sacrifice at the altar, if we know a brother has an offense against us, we should leave the sacrifice there and go be reconciled. Uh, of course, only priests lay gifts at the altar, and, and, and you are not my brother. But uh, this <laughs> example is in many ways a metaphor, which I'm learning. Oh. Yes, Matthew, we get it. Move on. He's so I never flustered. understood why I was so different from everyone else. I just wanted a comfortable life. You wanted to be better than everybody. Okay, yes. No. You're right. Mm. And I loved affluence because of it. Mm. I was comfortable behind bars in a boot and the armed escort behind the gold door. All the while you were scoring that synagogue, you lost your reputation and friends. I shamed our family. I turned my back on our people 
and I believe the choices I made were better for me and more important than my family and faith. Wow. Look at the shame in his, in his expression. Which is wrong. I, <laughs> I, I didn't understand that then, but, but I do now, and I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I wish I could take back the harm I caused you. He's I, such a great uh, all actor. Right. All right. Wow. I, I will search for something I can do to atone. Matthew, sit down. I prefer to stand. Please. <laughs> deserve the You're not the only one who must atone. Oh. Are you hungry? I lost my business because of you. And you are correct. Yeah. We lost our reputations and friends. I know. But I had no right to reject you as my son. God should strike me down for the things I said to you. I was shameful. Can you forgive me? I only made things worse. I'm sorry. We're sorry. But what, but what has changed? Oh, I sinned. We saw him too, Matthew. We heard his sermon. He is the teacher you are following. <laughs> yes, he called me and I... And you have already atoned. They were the most true words I have ever heard. <laughs> Some of it shocking. I know, I wrote it all down. <laughs> you are his Christ. Yes, he will redeem our family's name. Matthew, he chose you. To this day, I don't know why. <laughs> See, he notices things like that. It's those little shots that are beautiful. You say you always felt different from other people. And you are. You were set aside for something special. Thank you. Thank you, Ima. <laughs> say it. I'm, I'm over here hugging myself. <laughs> Thank you. Ima. <laughs> Faith. <laughs> Forgive him. I did. <laughs> with emotion, with feeling. <laughs> We're always trying to get away with it without having to actually emote. What a beautiful thing. I forgive you, son. Thank you. Thank you, Abba. <laughs> She's, I love how stern she is. She's like, thank you, Abba. <laughs> how long are you in Capernaum? Uh, I don't know. B but I promise to make amends as long as I'm here. You have. Ah. Uh -huh. Wait right here. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't throw this away. I will never live in that home again. So what? Give it away. Tear it down. Burn it if you want. Why would I do that? <laughs> You'll find something to do with it. Till then, you can take any floor in the house. Wow. <laughs> okay, pause. Familia. As human beings, 
just just as you okay never mind hang on i got a loosey goosey <clears throat> It's really challenging, okay? We are born into this world, into our each, each individual family, and that family already has either harmony or disharmony. It has its pain, it's, it's, it's hurt. We, we step into a world where things are already in motion. And sometimes we don't realize that this person, this family member isn't talking to this other family member because of the choices that they've made or we don't realize that this other person's not talking to this other person because they owe them some kind of money they stole from them they did something or they borrowed money didn't pay it back whatever it may be we don't realize that there are family members that are hurt in some way because they were abused by someone else we got we just come into this world just free, if I can use that word. And it isn't until we start interacting with one another that we start accumulating that debt, okay? Accumulating hurt, accumul accumulating pain. As children, we will taunt each other, we'll tease each other about things, we will even go so far as to hurt one another you know, and, and then those, those wounds, they stick with us until we're, we're grown adults. And then we, we end up not talking to one another. We end up being in, in complete disharmony with each other because of things that happened to us when we were younger. And then we hit a certain age where we start reflecting and we start thinking about our mortality. And we start to make things, we try our best to start to make things right and asking for forgiveness for something like that is not easy because we hold on to this me that was hurt so this person said these mean things to me this person i will never forgive because you know they they, they, they were harsh with their words i'm guilty of this not too long ago I told Erica that I would never have a relationship with my father. That as far as I was concerned, I didn't have a father. He was never there. He knew where my grandparents live. He never as much showed up and said, hey, I don't know where my son is, but here's some pants, here's some, a shirt, here's a sweater, here's shoes, something. If you could just get, make sure that it gets to him, we'd appreciate that. So he never, he never, he was never there for me. And I told her that I told Erica that if one day so I would get news that my that my father passed away, that I would be sad, but I don't know that I'd cry. I don't know that I'd feel emotion about it because I never developed a relationship with him. So how can I get emotional over someone that I don't even know? But um, through this journey, and you all know my journey here, I am I'm starting to see that. <clears throat> God is putting like this, this, this spirit of insight in me that is starting to allow me to understand people, that allows me to see why they are the way that they are, that allowed me to see that maybe my dad was really harsh with in his ways because his father was harsh in his ways. And that's not, and I'm not making excuses for him, but he's hurt too. I walked into this world with a hurt father and a hurt mother and other family issues, right? But it's not my fault. So I can't take the things that he did personally. And if he, and I and then I thought if he ever wanted to reach out to me, then fine, I I'd talk to him, but forgiveness, I'm not sure. And this past October, look at me, I'm, I'm doing the same thing that um, that Matthew was doing. Um, this last October, I had the opportunity to go uh, to this to Mexico with my mom because she needed to fix some things in Mexico, some properties and, and also fix some other stuff with him. And I had to sit with him in the car for the first time since I was 16. I hadn't seen him in person since I was 16. And he 
bef- prior to that, we had a conversation and he asked me if we could still be friends. He said, at the very least, if we could be friends. And I said, no, I just let that go. I just said, no, I don't accept us as friends. And for a second there, he thought I meant that I didn't want anything to do with him. I said, no, you're my father and you gave me life. And I'm grateful for that, uh, regardless of what you did or regardless of what you ex- went through at the time when you were with my mother. Uh, that had nothing to do with me. And of course, like, I, for- I forgive you. And we, we mended that. And that was such a great thing to do. It was, it felt great to start to, to mend those relationships. It's important. Of course, it's important. It brings, it brings you peace, you know? And so anyway, my, my point to all this is that it, that's important to ask for forgiveness, regardless of how the other person responds. If you're really wanting to be right with God, if you're really wanting to walk, um, you know, the rest of your life well with God, you, you can't have all this excess baggage. And, you know, I, I would really strongly suggest that you seek forgiveness or that you offer forgiveness to someone who may be waiting for it, you know, and, um, but um yeah, that, that's what I loved about this this particular scene. It's beautiful to see families, you know, getting together uh, or people talking about their pain openly and freely without anger arising, without that pain starting to cut open again, but just openly, freely say, you know what, like, yeah, like, you hurt me. I loved you and I was there for you and you you behaved in this way and that behavior hurt me. It's okay to say that. It's completely fine. It's completely okay to say that. Um, if it, depending, on, of course, on what you want. If you want to live it with live with peace, then that's important. If not, then you know you go on about your business, keep doing what you were doing, and and well, we'll see what happens. <laughs> but I know that I don't want to be in his presence if I have that um, those things against my my brothers and my sisters. And then just recently. I reached out to an old friend who I hadn't spoken to in a long time who hurt me. And I told him, I just call, I just messaged him and I, and I, cause of course I'm, I'm asking you all to message people that you've hurt or that have hurt you. And I can't not do it myself. I'm asking you to do it. So I, I too must do it. And I reached out to him and I told him that um, I just wanted to ask how he was doing. It'd been a really long time, but I didn't want to ask cause I didn't know if he wanted to hear from me or not. And he said, you know what? i I'm in the same position. And we've we've caught up and it was like it was as though we picked up right where we left off and the rest is just forgotten. It's important. It's important for your spirit, for your heart to to finally live live in peace. So if you're dealing with something that someone did to you, you know, and it's you find it hard to to let go of, you're only harming yourself. Um, there's a quote that says that uh, being angry with someone is like holding on to a hot piece of coal with the intention of throwing it at the other person, like holding on to anger is like holding a hot piece of coal with the intent of throwing it at someone. It's you who gets burned. It's, it's you, you're the one that gets burned. So, um, you know, just something to consider. Anyway, let's, let's get back to it. I appreciate you all listening. Let's do this. Let's, let's continue. Ah, come on. Okay. Come. What color does that look like to you? And you. I like Atticus. Relate to him big time with the observation. Drink it! Bureaucrats. He reminds me of a falcon. He's like watching everything from above. My old friend. Just circling. Watching. Are you busy? Fix the water. Fix the water, Octavius. If I see another drop of sewage in my water, I will personally drown you in it. So help me, Apollo. Octavius, you will gargle sewage. Vivid. I think I think he gets it. You got that, right? Uh, he's going to drown you in the, um, well, you know. I will find the breach. In the, well, you know. <laughs> Dominus. I will oversee the project, Freedom. You do that. Wow, Brown he's so water, angry. Deaf. Go. Do it now. Watch the talent leave their bodies when they arrive from Rome. You could keep time by it. Good help. It's these people. This land. It's going to force me to do something drastic. 
work. <laughs> I'm capable of anything. <laughs> Hail Caesar. I didn't catch that the first time. I got I got to hear that again cuz I love Atticus his attitude about everything. He's just letting things play out the way that they play out. He's just watching, observing from above. He's just you know, he's unattached to to what's happening emotionally it seems. And I just love I love you his attitude. That. I love his attitude. Brown water make you deaf. Go. Do it now. I like Quintus acting too. He's he's good at being mean. Watch the talent leave their bodies when they arrive from Rome. You could keep time by it. Good help. It's these people. This land. It's going to force me to do something drastic. Work? <laughs> I'm capable of anything. Hail Caesar. The timing is what, what, what makes that awesome. What do you want? What yes, Peter. Just beyond the western perimeter of the city, a camp has sprung up. So send them on their way. They are pilgrims, Dominus. Pilgrims to what? To whom? Jesus of Nazareth. Uh, he delivered the sermon on the Kerosim Plateau. Stop. He delivered it. And you're just telling me now. And then he's building a hut. And now he's relieving himself. Quintus. Neither Gaius nor myself have that many hours in the day. Don't speak for the men in my command. Please. <laughs> this feels a little more significant than relieving himself. Gaius, what was said? It sounded like any other sermon, Dominus. Is that what you heard, Cohortes? Look at him. Just any old sermon? Well, no, I, I haven't heard that many. Uh, let's see. Lengthy instructions about, uh, what was it? Something about animal hooves? Always read from right to left. Jewish. <laughs> it was so boring. Why didn't they stay on the plateau? Did Jesus lead them here? No, Dominus. No one knows where Jesus is. But many of his followers reside in the city. Was our former tax collector there? Matthew? Yes. Well, who cares anyway? Just get rid of them. Yeah, who cares? Anyways, Dominus. Pack them up. Force them out. We are still Rome. Or you could turn them into revenue. Oh, money? How? Redraw the city boundary to encompass the squatters. They're not currently on our census. All the better for you. They're not paying taxes wherever they came from, which means other preachers. Ledgers are down. I get it. The pilgrims have been peaceful to this point. I cannot say how they will respond to being taxed. <laughs> you better get some rest then, guys. My plan is to redraw the city lines and redraw them fast. We're behind this one. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Good plan, Quintus. But. As you carry it out, you may want to consider your future. My future? Don't be coy. As you well know, the Empire is always concerned with order. Of course. The governors are under increasing pressure not to overuse force on the citizenry. Pressure from Caesar. Hail. Look, he passively just goes, hail. Fine. Gaius, I need you to do your job without leaving marks. I will instruct the men, Dominus. I like Atticus' uh, character. His char character. And by the way, when I said he's good at being mean, I didn't mean that his mean being mean is good. I mean, like his acting, he's really good at portraying that mean person, like a mean person, uh, or skilled, if you will, replace that word. Um, I like Atticus because it seems like he's playing chess and everyone is his, his piece, you know, like he moves one piece over here. He was surprised to, to hear Gaius say that it was just like any other sermon when he knows well that it was not like any other sermon 
So he looked at him like surprised because like if it was like any other sermon, then why were you so affected by it? Why does it leave you contemplating? Why is it like, why has it uh, affected your spirit, right? And then when he says, is that true? He goes, yeah, something about, like he's just very casual about it. Yeah, something about hooves and, you know, reading from left to right. Like he knows that that's not true. So he played along with whatever guys is going. So he's, it's almost like he's saying, okay, let's see where this goes. You know, let's see how this ends, how this ends. And not just that, he knows he knows that Quintus's reaction to this could could end up badly. So he throws in a little bit of information in to get him to agree not to be violent towards the the people who are coming because he he kind of wants to see where this he doesn't want him to shut off Jesus's light too quickly, right? He wants this thing to play out to see just how far he can get it to go before he loses his before. Rome loses its, his it's cool right so yeah he's uh he's an interesting character I kind of like I kind of see him like a bird obviously he has a bird on his uh on his on his crest here whatever it's called his chest right but him he he kind of reminds me of a bird <laughs> just circling around watching everything observing right so that's awesome let's see How about you, Cohortes? Will you be moving along soon? Yeah, I will be headed to Jerusalem soon. Ah, delightful place. I owe Pilate a visit. So much oh. to catch up on. Wonderful. That one word. Wait, wait. Um. Also, um, Quintus was kind of alluding to the idea that he was skimming money right he was taking he goes we're 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 short this week this month right he said shh and he goes there he is like he's he was a, he was implying that he's taking money right right or is that or is that am i reaching too far here because he's like we're short shh like don't say don't tell anybody my little secret i'm tucking money away right because he as soon as he mentions pilates <laughs> i was gonna call him that as soon as he mentions pilates he like you know, you see a little fear in his eye there because he's like, oh, what are you going to go and tell him? Right. Because he just he just let out a little tiny little secret. So uh, I'm just wondering if that's what he was trying to trying to imply. Let's see that reaction one more time. I owe Pilate a visit. Uh Oh, fear right so there. Much Deep breath. Beautiful. Wonderful. Ima. What if you sewed a little pouch on the inside of our belts? It could be for raisins, like an emergency stash. <laughs> I've so many nights dreaming about these little squares, Ima. The cinnamon and big ones. <laughs> I will load you boys up like back mules. You will not go hungry on the road again. You, you, you. <laughs> He's like a little child. Taste this. I like him it? too. Do you think I would poison you? He's so animated. Oh, I love boy. it. Go on. Really good. <laughs> and he knows a lot about flavor from the wine business. So what is the point of all of this? <laughs> His I voice made too. it. I, I traded one of the guys at the dock for a little press. I can only make a few vials at a time. What for? It's a ceremonial press. But it's also delicious. Your Abba is very good at making oil. <laughs> I love doing it. There's none left. I think I'm going to ask Rema to marry me. <laughs> he just, he was holding that for a while. I knew it. There we go. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to make a fine husband. Hey, I'd marry you. Uh, do your fathers know each other? <laughs> uh, my father is dead. I'm sorry to hear that. May he rest in peace. Oh, got an older brother? No. Then who can arrange? Her father is aware of my intentions. This is not unheard of. Samson chose his own wife. Yeah, not exactly a model Israelite. David chose Abigail. Also, not the best example. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a chance. Ah, I, you? I, I love that. I love how so far, the mothers or the wives in the in this uh, in the show, whenever they speak, right? There's some. There's some authority, which, which if I'm not mistaken, 
it wasn't uh, it wasn't common in that time for women to speak up right it was mostly the men speaking and women were supposed to have their place but i like how they're portraying this because as soon as she said like boys let him let him whatever she said whatever she said like give him a chance they were all quiet and that they, they respected that and then they went on right in the previous thing previous uh, sequence we had matthew and 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 his dad right they were they were having their moment and she was like hey what was his name uh i forget his name sorry <laughs> the father Affius, F uh, uh, affluence something like that <laughs> um she causes attention and he's it's not about you know it's not about fearing your partner it's about respecting your partner right i love it Ooh, spoken with your rabbi about this the next time i see him i'll share my intentions I've searched my heart and I know it's right. Jesus will make it work. Thank you, Nora, for correcting me. Are you going to be here the whole time I do this? Yes. No, 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 Oh, your cooking is a powerful incentive. <laughs> they want to eat, they will stay in their room quietly. <laughs> okay, we're quiet now. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I got to tell you a quick story. That just reminded me, and it reminded me in theater. So when we, when we were kids, my sister, my brother, and a cousin of mine, we were all sitting in the room, in, in the dining table, and we were all yapping away, and my aunt comes into the room. And my brother was like, I want to say he was like three or four years old. He was small. And my, my aunt goes, I'm going to give $20 to the person who, who's, who doesn't talk the whole time during dinner. And my brother goes, so we all like, oh, we all look at each other like 20 bucks, right? This is, all we have to do is be quiet. We're in. My sister is in. My cousin is in. I'm in. My brother, this is my brother. He goes, Tia. I'm going to win the $20 because I'm not going to say a single word. Nope. And then my sister goes, shut up. And she goes, see, she spoke already. She's not going to get the $20, but I'm going to get the $20 because I'm going to be quiet the whole time. I'm not going to say a single word. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. <laughs> the whole time. But uh, anyway, that's the first time I count. I told that story in English, but that, yeah, that's my brother. He's like, we're going to be, we're quiet now. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Let's go tiny little bit back. Leonardo. Here we go. Yes, I talk to myself and I call myself by my full name. <laughs> okay, we're quiet now. Sorry. <laughs> we won't they get bored? Oh, we both have so much to study. Oh, and you don't? Of course I do. But, you know, I think you could help me. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's study. Come on. Yeah. Uh-huh. I have much to learn. <laughs> we all know his humor, right? So. <laughs> you, that fermented liquid. What? This? No wine on public property. Only in your private home or tavern. This is my home. <laughs> Primmy, let them have it. So, huh? So he should duck inside, drink it, and come back out? What difference would that make? Yes, Primmy. How are we going to redraw the city limits when they keep arriving in such numbers? You'll have to do it over and over again to encompass them all. Gaius, 
I heard you, Julius. I think tonight my time would be better spent elsewhere. You will finish the evening rounds. Enforce protocol patiently. Patiently? Give me a full report in the morning. Beautiful. Was that the Sp Spider Man melody? Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> All right, delete. Those shots behind behind objects to give you the impression that he's being followed and he knows it. He said, boo. How did you get up here so fast? <laughs> what do you want? I'm just hunting. Ooh. See, he's a bird. Hunting what? You were behind a plot to murder the Roman magistrate in Jerusalem. And you were there, in the desert, at the city's gates. Why did you let me get into Jerusalem in the first place? You know the answer to that? You thought you were good enough to stop me. I liked my chances. But we'll never know. Something unexpected happened. Yeah, a miracle. Yeah, if you say so. No, nope, it's a miracle. <laughs> what is he, Simon? What is he? Not who Relax. is he? Zealot. Or whatever it is you are now. Look, I'm just... Interested? Interested to see what happens next. So, if I turn and walk away right now, you won't put a knife in my back. I could have done that anywhere. How do you know I won't kill you? Because your dagger is at the bottom of the Jordan River. Ooh. Right where he threw it. So there's that. It does leave you defenseless, though, and that's bad for you. But you just... I didn't chase you up here, Simon. You left some very dangerous men in the lurch. The order is here. Oh, it's you're surprised? crazy. They won't quite. Then one of us has to make them. I'm leaving Capernaum for a while. They had better follow. If they stay in Capernaum, I will be forced to clean up your mess. Can't have zealots in a Roman town. Others will come for me. Now you're getting it. Who knows? Maybe they'll see your Messiah and come to believe. <laughs> what? We're zealots, man. 
And what are you doing on a rooftop chatting with a Roman? Don't touch me. Sorry. Simon. You were a zealot. Now you're a traitor. And they won't stop. <sighs> I find characters like like Atticus in shows very interesting. They're they're essentially the enemy, right? They're on the other side. But rather than coming at you aggressively, they're very passive excuse me they're friendly they appear to be helping you by giving you information they appear to be helping you by by telling you that the that something is around the corner for you so you better watch out right they, they almost like they want you to to survive whatever's chasing you because they want to make sure that they sweep in and get you right like that's that's atticus's um way of being he's like look somebody else is after you i don't like that because i want you so you better get rid of them before they get rid of you and uh and i want that for you because i want to be the one that that gets you i don't want i don't want them right it's it's so interesting to me i love i love that all right and i love that in storytelling okay so here we go uh, let's uh let's continue I can't believe I have you back. Here I am. <laughs> Where I'll always be. When you were gone this time, I had moments of feeling. Being what? Lost. I don't know what to call them. What did they feel like? I was angry. Sad. No, but you know, I'm a genius. We both are. You remember what I told you? I always remember that. It's what gets me through the days. He sees you. I know. I think about that moment so often. But sometimes in the memory, I forget what his face looks like. What do you mean? Haven't you ever been separated from someone and you can't recall their face after a while? Do you forget my face? <laughs> what? No, I don't forget your face. He's a what? <sighs> Things are so good now. Yeah, we we just have to spend more time together. Mm. Yeah, I think Jesus has work to do here. And I've been thinking about our family. Well, Ima is healthy, and my brothers are fishing. No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> it's time. We are really low on food and money. We'll be moved into Matthew's home by Erev Shabbat, former home. He's sharing all the details with the boys today. Where is Matthew going to stay? I hope with his family. He wants a fresh start. You would understand all about that. In any case, with no food, Anyways. <laughs> we'll have less to carry. But we are still low on money. Maybe you could uh, sell some of your jewelry. It's that it's all very personal. Every single piece? I said all. 
We've each given up some of our personal lives to follow Jesus. I gave up a name. But we each gained so much. Thomas says Zebedee is making olive oil now. That maybe we could take part in turning it into a business. I wonder if it could be sold as anointing oil. Only anointing oil is very specific. It's laid out in the books of Moses. It's not just olive oil? <laughs> Wait, you made it through Moses? Did you talk to Thomas? Uh, uh, it, it is oil with, with spices mixed in. We use them in some of our wines, cinnamon, cassia, and some other things. We would buy from the same vendors as the priests. Thomas would know where to get them. I think Thomas has other things on his mind. The ministry is demanding. Do not misunderstand, Rima. Thomas is a very dedicated student. And a hard worker. Yes. Thomas is a very hard worker. And smart. And very dedicated. Maybe a little distracted? She's all, and I handsome, and strong. <laughs> Stop dancing around us and... Call it what it is. Thank you. His dedication to you was obvious the moment I saw you both at the wedding. Oh, I was I was very stressed at that wedding. <laughs> it wasn't just a concern for your stress, like who it was. You are in love with him, Rema. <laughs> That's not how it works with our people. Um, you're a Gentile, so maybe you don't understand, but love <laughs> comes from marriage. Jews. Gentiles. Love is love. In our tradition, marriages are arranged by fathers. That's all she's saying. Where you come from? Do people... I'd rather not talk about She's all like, talk to me about your father. That's okay. Of course. Thomas's feelings toward you are as plain as day. Painfully obvious. And... From what we've heard, he may be wanting to make it permanent very soon. What we are asking is, would you want to? Uh, oh, it's, it's uh, complicated with my father. And, and considering, considering our circumstances, it is, wouldn't be very traditional. But um, yes, if my father approved, I would be very... Fortunate. Hmm. I would be very fortunate. Is that the Jewish way of saying that you love him and are excited? <laughs> oh. Oh. Wait, what, what was it that you heard about very soon? Did I say that? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Well, I'm sure by now most of you are aware of the tent village that is rapidly growing east of Capernaum. Those are people who followed us from the mount, who are now waiting to hear more. Their numbers grow by the day, as do the suspicions of Rome. In fact, Z informed me just this morning that a few members of his former order have even journeyed here. It would appear as if we were building an army Teacher? <laughs> well, that's one way of looking at it. The other way to look at it is my way. <clears throat> the correct way, you mean? <laughs> yes, sir. Mm. Those people are like those in regions all over. They're not an army. Not yet. They are in need of rescue. And you are going to help me rescue them different kind of rescue, see. <laughs> it is not sustainable for me to do all the preaching, all the healing and ministry. I've called you to Simon's home today and thank you, Eden, for hosting because our ministry would only grow and we want it to grow till the end of the age. There will be many more followers and like those not here, all will have roles and responsibilities. Most will be disciples. Students. But I have chosen you 12 as my apostles. He's all, huh? You're sending us? 
An apostle is the same as a messenger, one who... I know what it means, Matthew. <laughs> That's why I'm asking. You are my leaders. And for this mission I have for you, it's best that you spread out and not be concentrated in one place. I... I don't understand. I'm going to go home to Nazareth for a time, and while I'm there, I'm sending you out in every direction, two by two, specifically to our people only. Every direction, Rabbi? Yes, but not to the Gentiles. Not yet. That will come in time. But to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, just as Joshua led the 12 tribes to take the promised land. You will proclaim as you go, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And while you are on this mission, you will heal the sick and the lame by anointing them with oil. You will cast out demons. You will clean. What? Why are you all looking at me? <laughs> uh, could, could you just repeat that one more time? <laughs> uh huh? I'm sending you out two by two, proclaiming as you go, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. Uh, how soon are we talking about it? <laughs> There's that word again. I'll get to that, Simon. Hold on. Heal the sick. Cast out demons. While you are on this mission, I grant you this authority. Someday, you will have it all the time. Was that a ceremony I missed? This is it. Don't feel any different? I don't need you to feel anything to do great things. With all due respect, Rabbi, we've only just begun as students. We're not nearly qualified enough. Why would you need us for this work? He doesn't need us. He wants us. Thank you, see. That is so interesting. Um... He's, he's entrusting them with something enormous, something big. I mean, something that if they're not prepared, they could abuse, right? Um, but then the question is, would the Holy Spirit allow them to abuse it? Um, they're obviously doubting themselves, doubt, doubting their, their preparedness, their abilities. And, well, we'll see how that doubt goes if, if it's still in them then maybe maybe they won't be able to perform these things because uh, belief in in that is a huge part of it from my from my understanding um so it's uh yeah oh yeah and then another thing did, I, did you notice little james face yes right because there's a part coming up i'm not gonna well i'm pretty sure all of you have seen it but there's a part coming up where we address this little little james um so interesting um incredibly interesting um all right there's uh let, let's continue very good john if i needed religious leaders or qualified students for my ministry i wouldn't have chosen <laughs> well you get the point can we get back to the part about healing the sick for one second? <laughs> you will take nothing for your journey except the staff. Uh-oh. <laughs> no bread, no bag, no money. Not even Salome's food. <laughs> Wear sandals and do not bring an extra tunic. We can't even bring a change of clothes? Even the wandering cynic philosophers carry a second tunic. Yes, they do. And I'd like to distinguish you from the cynics. They also carry beggars' bags for people to put gold and silver coins into. Mm. And you will not do that. You received without paying. Now give without oh. paying. Whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it and stay there until you depart. Uh. Anyone should not receive you or listen to your words. Shake the dust off your feet as you leave that house or town. 
do not waste your time. You said if anyone will not listen to our words, what words exactly, what are we supposed to teach? Anything you've ever heard from me. I've only ever heard the one sermon. You heard the best one anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> that message was not just for the thousands that were there. It was for all who will hear it from now until the end of the age. How will they know it, you ask? Good question. Thanks for asking. <laughs> you will tell them. Like, Don't the bother asking because I know what you're going to ask. Places I will soon go. So you are preparing the way for my arrival and helping ensure that more people are ready to hear the good news. The miracles you'll perform on God's authority will prove my ministry. Suppose we hit a bad streak and several towns in a row reject us, maybe for days. How are we to eat? What if it gets bad? Like, like it has with John. I love his response here. Listen carefully, all of you. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. So, you're saying we could die? There will come a time when this will become far more difficult when persecution is an ever-present part of your ministry. Mm. Message. When that time comes. You will follow in my footsteps. And you will know what it actually means. Give up your life. Uh, he's sort of foreshadowing. I love that. I love that. Obviously, they're bringing up concerns, right? They're saying, "What if, what if it's, what if we go weeks without, with everyone rejecting us, right?" Obviously, they're not going to be fed. It's not like somebody rejects you and then feeds you anyway, right? Um, which means that they're probably not going to be fed. They're probably not going to be housed. They're probably not going to be, you know, they're going to go thirsty. So they're scared of that. And then Andrew brings up another point. He says, "Worse than that, what if it, things really get bad, like it has with John?" Like, what if they imprison us, right? What if they try to, excuse me, what if they try to harm us, cause us bodily harm? And Jesus' res Jesus' respond he response here is, do not fear those that can harm the body or kill the body, but cannot kill the soul, right? That's all of us. That's every human being. We can we can harm one another and put an end to, a, to our physical existence, but we cannot do anything to hurt the spirit. We cannot kill the spirit. There's another part of that that says, or the the other part part of that is, but fear that fear the one who can kill the spirit, right? That's the one you should fear. So, obviously, we want to make sure that we're in good standing with the only one who can toss our spirits or toss our souls into the uh, the lake of fire, if you will, right? Who can harm our 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 soul, harm what's within, right? So it, it, he's preparing them because people are going, all kinds of people are going to approach you and, and, and harm, well, harm them, right? But he's speaking to us indirectly as well. You're going to be walking down your path, walking your journey, and someone's going to come along and judge you for it without knowing you. Someone's going to point out that you're not being a good Christian, that you're not the right Christian, right? Um, earlier today, I ran into a comment with someone, someone says, um, you know, someone says that, uh, someone, someone pointed out a, a, a lyric that said with, with Hillsong that says, you know, if the stars were made to worship, so will I. And they're like, you know, this is blasphemy. Star, stars are not, we're not supposed to worship stars, but that's not what the lyric is saying. The lyric is saying the stars were made to worship, not the stars were made to be worshipped. But you take people that want to grab onto something that you're doing and they twist it and they think they, they become the authority of all things God, right? 
And we will run into those into that day in and day out, as I'm noticing in the comment section right now. Now, look, everyone is welcome here. Everyone is welcome, right? And I love every single one one of you for your love and support and for being here, right? We're all going, we're all walking the path in our own way, right? There are things that we all engage in this world. If we really, really want to live a life that is only biblical, 100%, then we shouldn't be using computers. We shouldn't be on the internet. We shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't be using gas, electricity, uh, all kinds of things, right? We should be out in the field, growing our own food, lighting fires every day, warming up our, 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 our food with fire from, from wood, right? Because airplanes, cars, trains, you know, telecommunications, all of that, none of that is in the Bible, right? None of that is in the Bible, but yet we all engage in different things. We all like different things. Erica's sweater was a quote from a movie. It's, it's just that it's just that. She's not saying it herself. She's not bringing it in here. She's not telling everybody to believe in Santa. She's not any of that. Okay. It's, it's, it just is that if you are afraid that that is going to somehow harm your spirit, then, then you stay away from that. Right. You stay away from that, but I'm not going to live my life in fear of, of things. If I'm, if I'm deeply, if I have already built my house on the rock, I'm not going to fear these winds. Right. Everyone's welcome. Otherwise, why was Jesus hanging out with prostitutes, thieves, tax collectors, liars, you know, uh, hustlers like Simon, who, who was hustling people, you know, rigging the fights and, and all that? Like, I mean, we're supposed to have a welcoming spirit here. This is the this this judgment of other people and and pointing out that they're false Christians you know, or that that church is false, all of that stuff. Atheists love that. They love that because there's disharmony within and they know, they love that. That's something that they'll, they'll look at and say, see, you guys can't even get along with each other. You guys can't even love one another. How are we supposed to believe that your love, that your love for God is, or that your God is the only God. If you can't even get, be harmonious with one another, if all of you can't even agree on one way to interpret the Bible, why should I believe that this Messiah is the one that I should follow? Why? Why? This is a recipe for atheism. When we do this, when we judge another Christian brother and sister for their path, we are creating an atheist. We're creating an atheist. You know, of course, the story, y'all pointing out the story of St. Nick. It's just a story. We have to know the history of these things. We can't just grab onto one thing and just run with it, right? We can't just list, sit there and listen to a pastor say things like, Hillsong is a de the devil's church because in the lyrics it says, it says that the stars are, are made to worship. Look at that. If the stars were made to worship, you should not worship stars. No, the lyrics, you should, you're supposed to use the wisdom that God gave you. Use his wisdom to look at the lyrics and say, look, if the, the mountains bow in reverence, so will I. If the, if the wind goes where you, where you tell it, then so will I. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. Meaning if the stars are made to worship you, then so will I. But you see, we take one little phrase and then we twist it to be against our own brothers and sisters. Where's the love? Where's the love? Where's his love? His love. He wouldn't be talking to this group of people. He's not like he picked, he chose, uh, you know, royalty to follow him as his disciples. He didn't, he didn't choose Pharisees who were the most dedicated followers of, the, of scripture to, to follow him, except Nicodemus, and he didn't. Right, he's hanging out. He 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 picked. He chose people who weren't, who you probably, if you were appointed to, you probably wouldn't pick them because you're like, well, that that person, she's a prostitute. I, I don't want her anywhere near Jesus, right? But no, he chose them specifically, and not just that. He allowed it. He allowed it for everyone to follow him. So it's just we we have to. I, I get that we want to protect the church and we want to protect the scripture. Sometimes we have to loosen up our grip a little bit. I'm, don't misinterpret that. 
I mean, open up our hand and shake, shake the hand instead of being so forceful with, with those ways. But anyway, I just, I just had to say that because I was noticing it in the comments and I really have to say, to say, you know, some people, I mean, this is why I don't call myself a Christian. I am a Christian, but I don't call myself that because I'm sure that somebody's going to point out the fact that I like this other type of music or that I like metal, metal music. You know, I like the beats. I like the rhythm. I like all that. But yeah, of course, some of the metal bands are satanic. I don't listen to that. Right. But, <laughs> but I'm still going to be judged by that. I like film, all, to all sorts of film, including, including horror films, but I'm able to separate the fact the the true from, from fictional characters. And I'm not sitting here worshiping things I shouldn't be worshiping. Anyway, that that's, that's that's all I'll say about that. You decide whether I'm a Christian. You get to decide whether I'm a Christian or not. Or you can you can make a guess or make an assumption. But he knows, he knows, and he knows he knows that where Erica's heart is, and a sweater is not going to change that. I have more to teach you about that. In the meantime, this journey. Will not come to that. We can talk about it after uh, Pew I have a concern. Pew Dub, sorry. You said you're sending us out two by two. Yes. The women will stay here in Capernaum. They will help support the ministry financially. They will also minister to the tent city outside the city walls. And Zebedee will be responsible for their safety. Matthew has also selflessly donated the use of his previous home. Selflessly? which will serve as the new place for them to stay. I still can't understand this. You want us to go out there? No defenses, no food, no shelter. Just go out into strange land. He said not to be afraid. Fear is not a thing you just stop, Andrew. I'm going yes, to see them. <laughs> Maybe the most at risk of all of us. Great. But whatever happened to trust? Everybody calm down. If you have a real question, ask it one at a time. I have a question. That was fast. <laughs> More of a concern, actually. Uh, I know I'm new, but Rabbi, I'd like to return to what you were saying about not bringing food or clothes and relying on those we minister to. Forgive me, but we cannot rely on everyone equally. I've developed some ideas on ways we can generate income to sustain our ministry in a reliable way. I appreciate that, Judas. I do. But for this journey, at least, I want you to learn what it means to fully rely on your Father in heaven, mm -hmm. as well as those around you and those whom you serve. And for food, big James, and for your life, John. This is what it means to follow and to lead. Teacher, even if not for this journey, now would be a good time to assign someone to manage the few resources we do have or anything we do bring back. You have someone in mind? I nominate Matthew. He's obviously the most experienced of any of us. And believe it or not, I agree that would be prudent. I'm sorry, I'm not comfortable dealing with money again. I formally decline. <laughs> Simple no would have been fine. The no. <laughs> the no, <laughs> he says. I nominate Judas. His experience would suit us better. Uh, I accept. Anything to help. Done. All right. Pairing up. Simon and Judas, north to Caesarea Philippi. Andrew? Ooh, I don't and know where Philip, Philip, Philippi is or whatever, but... East to Nave. Doesn't sound good. Nathaniel and Thad, south to Perea. John and Thomas, southwest to Joppa. Hmm? Big James and little James. <laughs> wait, wait for real. Come on. They can make it a thing. They can make it a thing. Humor disarms people. 
<laughs> West to the plains of Sharon. Matthew and Z. They're like, huh? What? Rabbi, <laughs> you sure about that? Uh, is that a ten? You know. All the way down to Jericho. I know it's near Samaria. You'll be fine. Z, everyone is reacting to the notion of you traveling with a tax collector. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? We have not told you about Matthew's former occupation. Former? He emphasized the former. He's a tax collector. He's no more a tax collector than you are a zealot. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. Listen to me. None of you is what you were. Boo! Remember that, all of you. And Z. I love this Jesus guy. <laughs> I love this Jesus guy. And I never thought I would say that before ever again after I left the Catholic church and became an atheist. I never thought that I would say I love Jesus. Like when you, when you read about him, it, you know, you, well, first of all, when you encounter or when you hear about Jesus, you always hear it from other people who, who are obviously completely enamored by Jesus. Right. And you get two things where they get the person, says like shows you God's goodness, shows you God's pain, God's love, and you need you wondering like maybe there is something to go in. There is something uh, to um, I don't know if my internet is lagging, but um, my connection is low. I think, but anyway, um, you know they either show you their love and it leaves you wondering or they want to force you to love Jesus by saying like he, he gave his life for you man and you're sinning and you should repent and they they lead with guilt by making you feel guilty you know that sort of approach is like fire that sort of approach is like fire what do you do when when if fire starts moving towards you what do you what does you naturally do you move away from that like this is, you know, but then, but then they'll say like, oh, it's the spirit, it's the fire of the spirit that's convicting you. And so, of course, it's your own guilt. But no, 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 it's you. It's your approach. You're not, you're not being very loving, right? Um, but anyway, back, back, back to the point. I'm going off course here. I love this because he's teaching you, he's teaching big lessons here, huge lessons. If you don't want, if you do not want people to look at you for who you used to be, you if you're something new, if you're something else, don't look at them as how they were. You have to treat them as something new. If you don't want them to look at you as how you were, your addiction, your lies, your, your, your bad habits, that now you are making an effort to change today that have made you something new then don't look at them for how they were. This is the part, this is a big part of forgiveness as well. Uh, going back to the earlier co comments, Matthew went, went there to ask his father for forgiveness, not knowing how his father was going to accept it. He just knew that he wanted to make things right with his dad. If his dad would have kept looking at him as old Matthew, he would have said, I don't accept your apology. Get out of my house. I lost my friends. I lost my business. And I lost my reputation because of you. So I don't want you here. Get out of my house. But he didn't see him as the old Matthew. He saw him as the new Matthew that was learning to sleep outside. He said, how was it for you sleeping outside? And he's like, I'm used to it now. Right? So for you, you, you have to think about how your images your images of other people are affecting your relationship with them and in, in indirectly affecting your relationship with God. Why? Because he says, if you, because Christ says, if you love me, if you love me, then you will obey my command. If you love me, you will obey my command. He says those just, just because that wasn't, if that wasn't clear enough, he says it a different way. He says, those who do not love me will not obey my command. And those who do, will obey. And my command is this, love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. 
which means that if you really love Jesus, you're going to love other people as he loved you. And how does he love you? He forgives you. He forgives your trespasses. He forgives every single time that you said you weren't going to lie and yet you did it again. He forgave you time and time. He forgave everything. And so you are to love others. If Jesus can weigh that image that he, that he has of you, lying, stealing, cheating, hopefully that's the worst that you've done, but it has gotten worse. If he can erase that image and treat you like something new, why can't you? He says that you can. Otherwise, he wouldn't ask you to do something. Otherwise, he'd be like, well, you're not me, so you can't love other people like I love you. So try. No, he's saying you can do that. You can love like I love. Why? Because it's me loving through you. That's why. It's me loving through you. So love others as I loved you. And that's how you show him that you love him. By obeying his command, his single command. Why? Because in that single command, you take care, it takes care of all the other commandments. Because if you love your neighbor like he loves you, Jesus didn't kill you. So how can you go and kill someone else if you love them like he loves you? He loves you enough not to steal from you. He loves you enough not to lie to you. He loves you enough not to, not to end your life. And so when you love others like you love him, then you won't kill, you won't steal, you won't cheat. Just loving them makes sure that you don't do any of those things. Not the other way around. That Not, not the other way around. Because if it's the loving other people, because there's some reward in it for you at the end of this life. And, and you think God doesn't see that? God sees right through that. Of course he sees that. Of course he sees that. And if he had patience with me as an atheist, when I didn't deserve his patience, I didn't deserve, I didn't deserve his protection, I didn't deserve his kindness, I didn't deserve his 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 grace at all. When I was cursing his name, when I was fighting his people, making mocking his people. Okay, cool. All right. Um, yeah. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened. I just started I just started talking about all that stuff, and then suddenly like my internet went down, which didn't make sense because I'm, first of all, my, my computer's connected directly to the router. It was saying my Wi-Fi was low, but I'm not connected by a Wi-Fi. Um, and then everything was working on my phone. It was just the streaming. So I don't know, maybe somebody, some force didn't want me sharing all that stuff with you all. But I forgot what I left off on. My, my point is now, Familia, that we should, we should be, um, we should be more loving with one another and more, caring with one another and really, really take, I mean, truly take this following Christ seriously. Take it seriously. And by serious, I mean, pay close attention to what he's saying. Okay. Pay close attention to what he's saying. If you're, if you're conflicted by that, read it over and over and over and over again. If you're still conflicted by that, do what I do. Sometimes I'm conflicted about something and maybe I find a YouTube video with like a, with like a clip from some movie that shares uh, Jesus saying some words. And I'm like, wow, like the delivery there, the words, what did he mean by that? I'm focusing more on that than, than, and I'm not suggesting that you should do the same, but because I have my trust issues with, with uh, priests and pastors, um, you know, I'd rather do that than go and have a pastor influence my, my relationship with, with Christ. Oh, I remember sort of what I was, what I was trying to say is that removing those images that, of, that we have of one another and start seeing people as they are now, not as they were before, right? Because we don't want people to see us as we were before. We don't like that, especially if we're putting forth the effort not to take those drugs, not to drink in the weekends, not to be promiscuous, not to lie, not to gamble, not to, if we're making that effort and people just continuously remind us of who we were, we, there's a higher chance that we're going to fall back into that. And it's not because we're weak or because we love that more. It's because it, well, we don't know why we don't, we don't know why. Um, I, I do, uh, PK, thank you for, thank you for that. And I do, and I do, all right. I do forgive them. I'm not there anymore, obviously, or I'd still be an atheist here today. I just, right now, where I am right now in my, in my path, I want to make sure that I'm able to walk as, as straight as I possibly can with God directly, just he and I, until I can be in that, in that environment and know 
what's right and what's wrong <laughs> about it. I mean, about that. Um, and I don't mean me, no. I mean that he that that I'm hearing his voice and I'm feeling his spirit over anything else. That that's all I meant. I meant by that. Okay, but let's let's finish watching here. Uh, oh, I have to I have to add the screen again. Just one second. And by the way, some of you who are wondering if I was an atheist, I haven't been an atheist in years. I was in a place before when I started this channel where I wasn't sure. I I knew that God was there. I knew that there was someone or something that was guiding me and protecting me. And no, it wasn't telling me to do things that I shouldn't be doing. No, it wasn't asking me to harm others. It was, um, I was very cautious and very careful to, 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 to listen and make sure that it wasn't causing me harm or anyone else harm and that it wasn't lying to me. And of course, uh, it proved to me that, um, not that I needed proof, but it proved to me that it was clearly the voice of God that I was hearing. And that my relationship was with, with him um, when I started this channel and people started to be moved and the way that this channel just grew um, was a huge indicator of that. So, um, so yeah. Okay. So let's, um, let's, uh, let's finish, let's finish watching this. Cause this is, this is really important, but um, I, I like what Jesus said here. Um, and that's, that's kind of the point where I was, moving is that i love i love the heart of jesus here and how he's teaching these disciples uh you know not just how to preach what he's saying not just how to teach what he's what he's teaching but to change them change themselves yeah. see how people are changing as well you know all the way down to jericho i know it's near samaria you'll be fine Z, everyone is reacting to the notion of you traveling with a tax collector. He's like, oh, okay. What? We have not told you about Matthew's former occupation. Former? He's a Emphasis. tax collector. He's no more a tax collector than you are a zealot. Beautiful. So if you don't consider, so the, the message there was, if you don't consider yourself a zealot anymore, then don't look at him as a tax collector because it's not, he's not that, but that doesn't mean that the world knows that the world is still going to see a tax collector. If they know him, they're still going to see a tax collector and they're going to treat him as such, but he doesn't want, he doesn't want Z to treat him that way. Right. If he doesn't want to be considered an assassin, <laughs> then, then don't consider him a tax collector. None of you is what you were. Remember that all of you. He's speaking to us too. Familia, he speak to you too. You and Matthew will be able to remember that better than anyone else. I am confident that the two of you will do and say great things because of your pasts. I know I can count on you. So that's it. You all have a lot to take in. Take a day to handle what you need to handle. There'll be a few more details tomorrow. I'll have Simon reach out. Shalom, friends. Shalom. Eden, this doesn't change our family plans. I don't have to be. Not now. I can talk to Rambai. He can shorten my trip. Not to say anything to him. I will be fine. I just need a minute. That's great. She's upset, right? But she says it's gonna be fine. I just need a minute. She knows that that feeling has gotta have has to subside Rabbi. because he has greater plans for him. Yes, Thomas. I am. Gracias, Dori. I thank you for believing in me. Of course. I do. It's just that I wanted to ask. I wanted your blessing to ask for Rayma's hand. Did you hear in what direction I'm sending you? Southwest, but 
<laughs> it's like, Definitely bruh, I already know. <laughs> yes, he does. You will complete your mission with John. After you may visit Gaffney and complete the second part of your mission. <laughs> really? Last I heard, Gaffney was not a believer. So maybe while you're making a pitch for yourself, <laughs> you can put in a good word for <laughs> So that's awesome. That's beautiful. Rema? Hi. <laughs> um, what, uh, what are you doing here? Oh, is this a bad time? No, I, I, I mean, no. <laughs> Actually, I was play cool, play cool. You. I've been assigned the mission. Have Thank you, Kim. Mission. Well, you're going to hear about it from the others, but I wanted to tell you myself. You're going to ask my father for permission to... Uh you know. <laughs> uh, me, thank you. Uh, <laughs> oh. Have I been so obvious? Yes. <laughs> and I can only play dumb for so long. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm supposed to be modest. Being around you doesn't make that easy. <laughs> <laughs> It's more difficult for me as well. But uh, wh wh why are you here right now? It's not like I'm leaving today. I, I, I didn't, didn't know when you might be leaving. And I know it's wrong for me to get involved in this, but I know my father and I should go too. But this mission comes first. I'll wait. Jesus knows my intentions. He's sending John and I to the Southwest to spread his word. Oh. <laughs> so you'll, you'll be near Teldo? Mm -hmm. He's like, yep. Then I will travel and wait for you there. Won't that upset your work here? I'll spread his message everywhere I go to anyone who'll listen. And besides, my father is not yet a believer. That's what Jesus said. I guess we both have our work cut out for us. <laughs> Rema, I am willing to do this on my own and follow our customs. I know. But this is different. Everything about it has been. And mm. besides, I want your visit to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> I will see you in job. <laughs> that was smooth. Very smooth. Here it comes. Master. It's James. May I have a moment? Of this course. is going to be so hard for some of us. I am. Forgive me, I'm... Uh... Not always confident to speak. Slow to speak. It's a very good quality. <laughs> <clears throat> I wanted to ask you a question. Please? So you're sending us out with the ability to heal the sick and lame. Yes, that, that is what you said. Yes. So you're telling me that I have the ability to heal... me i just find that difficult to imagine with my condition which you haven't healed do you want to be healed yes of course if, if that's possible i think if you've seen possible. enough to know it's possible <laughs> if that's possible Why haven't you? Because I trust you. What? Yeah, what? <laughs> little James. Precious little James. 
I need you to listen to me very carefully. Because what I'm going to say defines your whole life to this point and will define the rest of your life. Do you understand? In the Father's will, I could heal you, right now. And you'd have a good story to tell, yes? Yes, that you do miracles. And that's a good story. But there are already dozens who can tell that story. And there will be hundreds more, even thousands. But think of the story that you have, especially uh. in this journey to come, if I don't heal you. So, huh? To know how to proclaim that you still praise God in spite of this. Uh. To know how to focus on all that matters so much more than the body. To show people that you can be patient with your suffering here on earth because you know you'll spend eternity with no suffering. Not everyone can understand that. <laughs> How many people do you think the Father and I trust this with? Hmm? Not many. But the others, they're so much more. So much more what? I don't know. Stronger? Better at this? Comparison. Comparing. James, I love you. The thief of joy. But I don't want to hear that ever again. I know how easy it is to say the Song of David that I fearfully and wonderfully made. But it doesn't make this any easier. And in this group, <laughs> it doesn't make me feel like any less of a burden. A burden? First of all, it is far easier to deal with your slow walking than it is to deal with time. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> Are you fast? Do you look impressive when you walk? Maybe not. <laughs> but these are things the father doesn't care about. <laughs> you are going to do more for me than most people ever dream. So many people need healing in order to believe in me. Or they need healing because their hearts are so sick. That doesn't apply to you. And many are healed or not healed because the Father in Heaven has a plan, maybe a mystery. And we remember what Job said. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When you pass from this earth and you meet your Father in heaven, where Isaiah promises you will leap like a deer, your reward will be great. So hold on a little longer. And when you discover yourself finding true strength because of your weakness, and when you do great things in my name, in spite of this, the impact will last for generations. Mm. Do you understand? It. Thank you, Master. A man like you healing others. <laughs> oh, what a sight. I can't wait to hear your stories when you return. Shalom, my son. Shalom. And James. Remember. You will be here. It's only a matter of time. Oh, goodness.
goodness, what a what a what a hard lesson, right? His story is gonna be very unique. Thousands of people are gonna tell talk talk about how they they were healed by him. Right. And of course, he's probably afraid that people are going to say, like, well, then if he's the Messiah, how come he hasn't healed you? But the story, the story, right? And he compares himself to others. Like, let's think about it. How many times do we not compare ourselves to others and think that another person is more loved by God because they are more involved in the church or that they're loved more by God because they're blessed in some way that you're not? Right. I've actually been thinking about that a lot lately. A lot. I and you know, and feeling like I don't have really much special, many special things to 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 offer, right? But somehow, somehow, God knew I liked music. He knows that I like making videos. I really enjoy making videos, editing videos is i just loved it i've always loved it i loved music and here we are familia 116 people watching right now but 121,000 subscribers to this channel that have come and i'm grateful for that i don't uh i don't think that i am anything special but i do think that this channel is very special I think that this channel is very special because it's become sort of like a lost and found. It's become a lost and found. And I pray that he continues to bring people here who are lost, that they find something, not me, but that they find something in a song, in a lyric, in a sequence of the chosen, in maybe some, some story that we share together in maybe your test testimonies in the comment section you know, the strength that some of you have is incredibly impressive. Talking to Joanne, uh, Dori, the loss that you've suffered in the last few years that I've been with you, I know I've been tremendous. Jackie, to hear your story is uplifting. And so many people that have come and gone. And again, the, the theme here is to not worry about the things of this world. This world comes and it goes. It comes and, and it just, it's meant to come and go. Which is what I, when he says, what he said to G, to little James here, was enlightening to me, because I felt that way about when when I had my grandpa here, I loved my grandfather so much, with that when I lost him, I spiraled out, and I had so many things, so many questions, which was sort of the the beginning of of me asking my pat my pre priest, the priest of my church some questions that led to my atheism. And I, I just couldn't let him go, even after he was gone. But what God taught me in the next few years was something else. Because when my grandmother suffered her stroke, I was prepared in a, in a different way. I understood that this, this time would come. And to think that it wouldn't was naive and was only going to set me up for more pain and more, more distress. So what I did, the first thing that I did when my mother called me and told me that she had just gotten a call from my aunt that my, my grandmother passed away, the first thing that I did was I thanked him for giving me such a grandmother. I thanked him for allowing her to be such a huge part of my life, to show me the, a love that, that I didn't somewhat receive from my own mother, that she was there for me, that she was a, a rock for me, that her humor kept me going, that her wisdom kept me going. I'm, I just gave thanks. And we'll see each other again later. You know, we will. It's a matter, of, it is a game of patience. And so what, she, what he, what Jesus was asking little James to do was not easy. But he says, how many people do you think the Father and I trust with this? If he tells that to someone else, people will be like, you're stupid. I'm sorry for the word, but they would be like, you're stupid. You believe that? He probably can't even heal you. Or that's messed up. He he chose you, but he doesn't heal you. But yet he heals strangers. You know? All of these things that little James still could use. Or no, sorry. That his mind can use to get him to fall away from that, from Christ. But 
he remains faithful and that uh that goes that goes in the books and an example like that is say look trust jesus when trust god trust the father trust the holy spirit trust jesus when he's when and his timing i recently had a a someone comment on on the channel who someone who lost their granddaughter and they were filled with a two-year-old granddaughter and they were filled with so many questions and doubt and all kinds of stuff. But instead of turning away from God, they just trusted his will. They just trusted his decision. They just trusted, um, you know, his, his, uh, his plan. And that little girl, she lost her life, but she gave life to seven other people, seven or eight other people. Her eyes were donated to, to someone else. She gave, she gave other people a chance and she, and this grandmother held on to that. And that's that's strength right there. I, I don't know that I would have that kind of strength. You know? So anyway, that's beautiful. So let's 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 continue and finish off here, Familia. Oh, it's such a harsh, hard. By the way, in that gratitude of my grandmother, my grief came, I grieved almost instantly. I can't even explain it. A circle was completely closed for me in that moment. <laughs> I forgot about right. this. I forgot about this. Hello, Matthew. Um, oh, man. Shalom. Oh, he's, he's trying. Did I say it wrong? No, no, no. I just, I didn't expect to see you here. Well, I'm stationed here. Um, are you moving back in? No, no, I, I cannot live here anymore. Nobody wants the best house on the block. <laughs> It'll be used for the ministry. By friends of yours? I suppose they are my friends, yes. Doubt the neighbors would like it. As long as order is kept. And if they're friends of yours, I'll make sure. To... Uh, we uh, patrol the area regularly for your safety and the general peace. <laughs> the general peace. You will? Never better. Yourself? It, it's okay, guys. They're just here to eat. Many of us will leave Capernaum for missionary work. For how long? We don't. It will be dangerous. I must go now, guys. Trust your wits, Matthew. <laughs> I'll see you all right. That's that's so sweet. <laughs> Welcome to my home that I no longer live in. <laughs> Can I say the hard part first? This might be the last time we're all together for a while. What's the easy part? I said there was an easy part. <laughs> I 
I just helped my wife as she tried to accept the idea that I would be the one making Pharisees and Romans upset the way Jesus does. It scares her. But not you? Of course it does. The unknowns are overwhelming. Are we ready? I'm terrified. I'm not afraid. Except for Z, who is never afraid of anything. Philip, you've done this kind of thing before. You have any thoughts? Well, I've done a little preaching, but I've never done anything like this. All I can say is that it's scary when you upset powerful people. <laughs> but it's worth it. <laughs> this is what we signed up for. We, uh, May not have known it at the time, but we go where he sends us. Look, Master has told us what to do. We've seen how he does it. So we have what we need. Whoever you go with, let's stay strong together. I'm sure he put us with our partners for a reason. Let's make the most of it. Let's gather around. Come on, stand next to your partner. Would you be okay with a former tax collector? <laughs> former zealot? <laughs> I probably couldn't do it myself, but Master knows you're a better man than I am. Can I trust you? It'll be fine. Come on. All of us. Matthew, I know you hate it, but you too. <laughs> when I was with Eden, a song of David came to mind. The one when he fled from Absalom. I shared it with Eden as a reminder because she was fearful. I think we need it too. Oh, Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of my soul, there is no salvation for him in God. <laughs> but you, you Lord, Lord, are a shield about me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried aloud to the Lord, and he answered me from his holy hill. I lay down and slept. I will not be afraid of the many thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. But I so Lord, Oh, the music is so beautiful. Me, oh, my God. For you strike all my enemies on the cheek. You break the teeth of the wicked. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Your blessing be on your people. Hey. Is it acting funny again? Uh, apologies, familia. Uh, well, I, I want to thank you all for joining me here. It's been two hours, and I appreciate every single one of you who've, who've been here for from the beginning. Um, I know that it's really late for some of you, so I appreciate your time. Um, it's uh, It's been a few challenging weeks. Uh, I've been very busy, and so there wasn't a video here today this morning. I'm not sure if there's going to be a Grinch video tomorrow because I still have some work to do. Um, but um, but I appreciate your patience with, with me on this. Um, you know, it's this season. Oh, sorry. Let me go back. <laughs> oh, that was it. This season has taught me so much. I've learned I've learned so much about this about myself this season. And I'm glad that this story is being told the way that it is because it's um it's it's it brings a different dimension to those stories, right? It's not just reading about them and imagining and letting your imagination sort of put the pieces together you're seeing it you're hearing it 
the uh, production level is, is top notch, which makes it easier to follow. It makes it easier for you to feel what they're feeling. It guides you into their story. It gives it gives you insight into their individual relationships. Uh, it gives you an idea of their sufferings. You know how how much they suffered, how hard it was for you know for Simon to leave his wife behind. How difficult it must have been for parents to let their children go and go off to these strange lands and 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 put themselves in danger. So it's um. It's it's a beautiful it, the storytelling is great. I just really absolutely love this, and I want to thank the people at the Chosen for creating such beautiful, um, beautiful a beautiful show. Thank you for putting in the effort to make this as beautiful as possible on all levels: the cinematography, the lighting, the special effects, the acting, the the uh, the wardrobe. Uh, you know, even even the uh, foley foley is like the sound effects that they add afterwards after it's been recording the footsteps and all of that. The making sure that the lighting is right that it all makes sense putting the acting the storylines uh, stitching all the different stories that are happening all at once with Atticus and and with with uh with Quintus and then the other story with Matthew and and his relationship with with the Roman his past and his parents and little James and all these other stories that are being blended in perfectly they're they're stitched together beautifully and so they're all doing a great work and a special thank you to, also to Angel Studios for uh for starting you know, they started off with the chosen started off with Angel Studios, and I'm grateful to them because they've they've considered this channel for uh, for the chosen and to help uh, you know promote other um, uh, other shows, right? And so, if you can all help me and help the channel out by downloading the Angel Studios app, um, we'd appreciate that so so much. There's many ways that you can help this the, the channel out. The, the best way and the only way that I need you to help with right now is by hitting the like button if you haven't already and maybe sharing these these lives with other people. Or if you have a song that 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 moves you in some way, um, rewatching it and sharing it with other people, right? That helps drastically. But the point to this channel, I feel, and I think I was saying that uh, previously, is that I'm grateful that God has turned this into sort of like a lost and found, if I may call it that, where people have found some something here. Um, you know, and have grown in some way um, in in the channel. And what I love what I love the most is that um, it, it's not about me. It's about one another. It's about you and each other supporting one another. As I just watched uh, the live chat happen, you know, you telling your stories, you sharing your stories, and then you responding to those people and encouraging them. You know, we have. Uh, um, uh, Joanne here. Joanne, I'm so sorry for, for the loss that you've uh, suffered recently. And I want you to know you have a familia, a, a huge familia all over the globe from the UK and, and Scotland and, and Germany, uh, you know, people out here in the United States and Canada, all over the world who are, are here with you and you're not alone. You know, as you may feel like that sometimes, but you're not alone. We're all with you. And then that goes that goes for anyone else who's watching, who's suffering through something right now, suffering through addiction, as I saw earlier, suffering through loneliness, suffering the loss of family members, suffering. And, and, and the thing is, the beautiful thing is that you're not just suffering, you're pushing through. And that's what matters. And that's what matters. And I hope that you continue to join us on the channel. And I hope that if a song moves you or you know someone who could hear like say so will i or reckless love or the ocean song that you send it to them maybe they're going through something and that song and that reaction moves them in some way and and um and and that that god may find more lost sheep you know that that's it that's all that i really really truly really want is the channel to serve as a lost and found where people can come and and join us and be themselves and not be scared to to say hey i'm i'm hurting right now i'm suffering and for everyone else to join me in encouraging them and moving them forward and and getting them to to stay in the light and not move into the shadows but but uh, anyway i, I want to thank you all for helping me out with that uh but again i i i want to before we leave, I want to show my appreciation to our father. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to get together. Thank you for giving us the strength to deal with our with our losses. Thank you for giving us the wisdom to the wisdom and the insight to see beyond our pain. You know what's on the other side of our pain. Thank you for shining the light on this side of 
that pain that losing someone causes. Thank you for keeping us from the dark. Thank you for always showing us grace when we don't deserve it. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for showing us how to be patient like you are patient with us. Allow us the opportunity to to love one another as you loved us. Show us what it truly means to love one another. Please show us what's what's true. Show us your truth. And that we may always walk in your truth. Thank you so much. We thank you for providing for us. We thank you so much for providing uh, food and shelter for, for us. And we'd like to ask you to please protect those who uh, may be in the shadows now to give healing to those who need need the healing. And if healing isn't in your plan, Father, please give them the wisdom to to love you and to keep their faith in you and to keep their eyes on you and know that they will be healed. If not in this life and the next life that they too will have the treasures that you are storing us, storing for us um, in the afterlife. Father, we thank you so much for allowing you for, for allowing us to experience your son and his wisdom and for hearing his words and for being, for us being able to hear it and see it through these shows. We ask that you continue to bless the makers of this show, um, the creators and the writers and everyone who has their hands on this, that we may continue to see your light and to continue getting closer and closer and closer to you. Father, we also ask you for the people who are confused now, for people who feel that it is their job to to judge others, soften their hearts. Father, let them see that you love them and you love the people that they are judging just as much as you loved your son. Allow your allow that love to shine in them and that they be closer to you and that they be, be more like you. Uh, I pray for all of us to be more like you and more and more uh, closer to you and stay in your life. Father, thank you so much in your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Familia, for joining us. I'm not much of a big prayer, but I, I'm, I'm putting in the effort. I'm not putting on a show. I'm not doing it that I do it at the end so that nobody says, like, oh, he's just acting. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. What matters is for me is that if you are suffering now, you have a family here and on this channel. And we love you. We appreciate you all so much. Thank you for joining us. We, let's, uh, let's meet again like this next Monday for episode three, which we haven't seen. So episode three coming next Monday. I'll see you throughout the week with more reactions um, and all that. <laughs> all right. All right, familia. Stay blessed. And, uh, and if you're near a taco spot, eat, eat some tacos on my behalf. <laughs> all right. See ya. Bye.